Hi, this is Chuck Sachs from Indie Opera Podcast with my fourth installment of Interviews from the Void. These are interviews that never got released last year. This one is with the Canadian tenor Jean-Michel Richet, who was singing Floristan in Leonore by Beethoven, produced by Opera Lafayette in 2020. During 2020, Jean-Michel took the time to learn some new roles and work on his technique. However, he was able to do a concert with the Montreal Symphonic Orchestra in October, singing excerpts of Faust under Maestro Jacques Lacombe. His big upcoming project next season is creating the role of Alexandre Rosenberg in La Beauté du Monde, a new opera from composer Julien Bilodeau and librettist Michel-Marc Bouchard about the epic rescue of artwork from the Louvre during World War II. It is going to be presented in March 22 by Opera de Montreal. After that... Jean-Michel will also create a role in Enigma by the French composer Patrick Bergan at Metz Opera with a planned world premiere in November 22, based on famous French writer Eric Emmanuel Schmidt's play Les Variations Enigmatiques. It is an opera with only two characters in a closed set environment. Please enjoy our interview. Als ich dich mit Wunsch schlage, meines Herzens fest und zwingt, ach, es waren schöne Tage, ach, es waren schöne Tage. This is Chuck Sachs for Indie Opera Podcast, and I'll be talking with tenor Jean-Michel Richet, who is currently singing Floristan in Opera Lafayette's production of Beethoven's original 1805 version of Fidelio, titled Leonore. How are you doing, Jean-Michel? Great, great. It's nice to be here. So, last night was the first performance, which was March 2nd, and you have another one tomorrow night. Yep. How did you feel last night went? It was a good night. Uh, we were quite, um, I wouldn't say nervous, but we're quite excited uh, because it, the show is recorded. Uh, so we, we could feel in it, you know, every time you, we sing in New York, uh, it was the same feeling three years ago when we did the Gavol, you know. Um, you know, there's something special about singing here. So, you, you know, you always feel a bit tad more excited, you know, to, right. to, to yeah, be here. So you, you actually sang Floristan in a completely different Leonore, the Gavo and Bui. Yes. And this is, um, P- P- Beethoven's was also based on Bui via Sonnen Leitner. Yeah. The, the, uh, the libretto itself. Um, so, but also it's the house here is kind of, it's it's big but intimate. It's not so big, it's intimate, the K Playhouse. I, at K Playhouse, I, I, sang, I sang there two years ago and it's a tremendous place to sing. Uh, it, the, it's just enough live, uh, mm-hmm. just enough return. Mm-hmm. Uh, you feel the connection with the public because they're they're close. So it, it's really. It's I really know. Nice. I was in the last row, um, and I. It was like this is a good size. Mm. What is the size of the space in DC? That uh, maybe um, maybe fifty percent bigger uh, in the in the mm-hmm. Kennedy Center. Uh, but it was also a, a, a great night there. Um, we uh, public uh, was was really uh, alive. I, I, we felt that because of the camera, the public yesterday kind of like were, you know, careful not to disturb <laughs> anything. But I mean, that was really respectful. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in DC, uh, since there were no cameras, uh, people, they could express a bit more about like, you know, especially the, the funny parts or... Uh, right, but also, I mean, in a sense, Beethoven, in the writing of this, he kind of, the orchestra ends pieces and not so much as like we think of with what we call buttons. Mm. It's like 
Applaud now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you do get, you know, it's ended and everything, but they're, they're much quieter endings than you would yes. normally be used to, yeah. which is interesting. Or, e or even in the, in the quartet, I mean, it, it, mm -hmm. it completely f uh, fails yeah. uh, as an ending because it goes with this big, uh, you know, half cadenza, and it's really, really dramatic, and then, uh, okay, we need to go on with the duet, and the duet is really, really soft. So, People they kind of want to applaud because it's this big quart uh, quartet with yes. the evil and you know everything unfolds. But then you're like, no, no, we're still in it. <laughs> right. It's like, and you were lucky because Florestan doesn't come in until Act Three. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's three people's cell phones who went off in the first act. So, luckily, not in your act. Yeah, yeah. Luckily. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, what would you say? Are, are there major differences besides just composer between the Gavo and the Beethoven? Oh yeah, um, I mean, for sure there's a, a big connection uh, between those two opera uh, in the, in the style, I, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, but the big thing uh, is in the libretto um, mm -hmm. because Bouilly was a judge, and there's something you know, the the main driver is you know duty mm -hmm. in this opera. And I would say that in the Beethoven, it's more about destiny. Mm -hmm. um, when when Leonor uh, speaks, when Florestan speaks, they're they're talking about it's their faith. They need to do that in a, a, a bigger scale mm -hmm. of the event. Uh, and that's I would say that's the biggest difference. But I mean, at the end of the day, those are really, really similar ideas and and you know stories. Uh, it's a bit more. You know, fleshed out, uh, especially in the third act, because the the melodrama, the quartet. I mean, the quartet doesn't uh, doesn't exist at all in the in mm -hmm. the Gavoubouilly version. It's like one page of text. Right. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah, the those are close in the in the classical sense uh, of uh, of style. Uh, I think that was the, the, the idea of, of Ryan to, to put this mm -hmm. on the table, to say Beethoven is a classical composer mm -hmm. in, his, in his craft. Um, and, and it's funny because every time people think about Beethoven, and especially Fidelio, like mm -hmm. the later version, um, the, the best conductors, they, they say, you know, you hear Goethe Denemann, you know, you hear Wagner in, in the harmony. Uh, I did uh, I did uh, Fidelio as Yakino, not as Florestan, mm -hmm. in October in Montreal, and Yannick Nezaseguin was conducting. Yes, it was this great great thing, and and even Yannick was talking about the fact that, uh, you know, he, you 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 can see far away what it will become for music itself. But at the at the at the end of the day, Beethoven he didn't know Wagner, he didn't know Goethe. No, the I mean it. Uh, I mean. What was crying at me was Mozart. Exactly, I mean, and, exactly. And I know he, he was definitely. Uh, Will spoke about that, and and, yeah. and uh, they talk about it in the program notes about some of those leaning and understandings of, of how Mozart was writing then. Yes, and, and he, the, the 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 players and the singers of that era. Yes. There, what what did they sing the yes. year before? Uh, Sabe right. Flute. For sure, and uh, uh, you know, Will Will uh, Crutchfield, he, he was like, you know, when he recreated that aria, he did this mm -hmm. thinking about Zauberflöte, and I mean, yeah. it's it's crying out loud, like the right, because it is it's the same style of piece, like uh, Magic Flute, which yes. is uh, yeah, a rescue rescue type of opera, right, right, and but an opera with dialogue, yes, which is I mean, in a sense, as we in America, we, some of us Americans would say, it's a precursor to musical theater mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in, in yes. so many respects. Mm -hmm. um, now you've also been lucky that at least about half your cast was with you yes. both. You were all together for this and the Gavo. Yeah. Um, and that was the Marceline, uh, the Giacchino, and, and uh, the Don Fernand. Yes. Uh, and, and me. <laughs> and, and you, of course. But, <laughs> Uh, you had a different Leonor yes. completely. Yeah, Natalie uh, was uh, replacing uh, Kimi in that in that sense. I mean, uh, it is uh, a really even if it's in the Mozart aesthetic, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is uh, a really big 
role to sing for Leonore. Mm -hmm. uh, it is bigger for me as Florestan, but there's no real comparison. Uh, right. She sings in, like in almost every scene. Yes, she, she really, Leonore doesn't really leave the stage. Uh, now, I don't know Gavot's writing. Is Gavot more French? Uh, I mean, it's French. It's but really it's... in the classical era of French. Uh -huh. So we. Uh, what would you relate that I'm mean, Gavot to stylistically? Uh, uh, I mean, it, it, we're talking like early Mozart. We're uh, we're talking Grétry opera. We're talking, you know, like the every every era is always. Uh, mm -hmm. tinted by the, the era before. Mm -hmm. So all the classical era, you hear Baroque music. It's not Baroque music, but you hear it uh -huh. in the music. And so it, that's the thing, like Beethoven, he's a classical romantic composer, mm -hmm. but you hear the classic in, the, in his composing. Mm -hmm. So it's the same. Uh, I would say that the Gavo, you hear the, 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 the legacy of Baroque music in it. So yeah. Now, your training started in uh, Montreal. Yes, because you are French Canadian. Absolutely, I'm. I'm born and raised in yes. Montreal. And so it, it started there. You went through uh, uh, University uh, of Montreal. Uh, but it's funny because I was uh, back then a baritone. <laughs> so I studied uh, in University of Montreal as a baritone. Uh, I did my bachelor and my master's there, and I joined uh, Atelier Lyrique, which is the the opera studio of Opéra de Montréal, okay. uh, as a baritone. And after a year there, I switched to uh, to become a tenor, and so I finished my uh, my residency there, and I then joined Curtis Institute of Music to you know give me just a mm -hmm. bit more experience, mm -hmm. and that has been a tremendous choice for me because. Curtis was perfect for what I needed. Mm -hmm. so I did two years uh, at Curtis Institute of Music as a tenor, and it's been what my it's my fifth year as a freelancer. Wow, it's uh, I actually saw the because uh, you did the uh, Quiet Place, mm. the new revised yes. yeah, two the, hour whatever you know Quiet Place. Yes, because um, I they brought that up. You, you came to a they brought it to New York City, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. in the Cape yes, House. Yes, I saw that. It, yeah. It's, it was fascinating and strange. I know Quiet mm -hmm. Place. I can't say I'm particularly fond of this version. Oh, I, oh that's a shame because I love it. <laughs> I, 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 I'll tell you why. Yes, please. The thing is that it is extremely thick. Mm -hmm. the, uh, it is really difficult because everything is messy. <laughs> you know, no, it's true. Yes. And, and, and it's so uh, autobiographic of, of uh, Bernstein. Bernstein yes. it, everything is messy, it's complicated, it, and it's, a, it's for an, uh, an audience, for a public, it's a lot to take. But what I like about mm -hmm. the new version of A Quiet Place is because it's only 90 minutes, actually. Right, yes. And so you, it, you get hit, but then you can be like, okay, now I, I can digest it. The, the other version, mm -hmm. especially with the one with, with uh, uh, trouble, in, you know, right, trouble and yeah. in the middle, uh, you, you, it's, it's a bit too tiresome at the end of the day. So, uh, you know. I, I do understand. <laughs> I, I've seen, now I've seen both versions. Uh, it's a score I, I love. Mm. It's because it is so wild and woolly um, and there's, and it's, I guess what I was missing was some of the, there was some glorious music that seemed to, that got cut mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. of the 90-minute version. Yes, that's some true. Some truly beautiful music, and it's like, mm -hmm. um, But it's, it was still fascinating to see, and it's, it's and you were Francois. In that yes, movie. I was Francois, and I mean, there's... Which there's, is the husband and the ex-boyfriend. Yes, <laughs> of, of Junior. Yes. And, and, but, and he's a French-Canadian, so I mean, yes. the role, <laughs> I have to say, uh, mm, not often in my life I, I've, I've got to sing such a tailored role for my voice and for my character. So, so that was great. Well, I mean, we can, at least we know this, that Bernstein loved writing for the voice and knew yes. what he was doing. Oh, yeah, you bet. Yes. And now you've had some other major things go on. Uh, we were talking before about uh, the lilies. Yes. Oh, that was such a great project. Which, uh, it, were you in the uh, original the cast that uh, yeah, premiered in Montreal? I, I premiered it. It was my actually my first first role, fresh out of Curtis. I was 
I was not even graduated. Wow. And, <laughs> and then you're, you're and there as one of the, the two. Oh, yeah. Like, as, the, as the Juliette, I would say, because it's like a Romeo and Juliet, yes. but French Canadian uh, and a gay one. Right. Uh, For people who don't know, Lily's is uh, based on a French play and then a French, uh, a, a French Canadian movie uh, that sets Romeo and Juliet in uh, the provinces of Canada. Uh, but it's two young men that yeah. fall in love and uh, it's all told in flashback because it's set in the prison uh, as they're trying to get um, some recognition from the, the, the man who put them into prison. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a layered story, yes. uh, but it, it, at the end of the day, it's based on two mm -hmm. uh, teenagers mm -hmm. that they fall in love at school mm -hmm. and society is against them. Uh, it was uh, it was a great experience for me because, uh, as I as I told you, like mm -hmm. it was my first first role. My my counterpart was uh, Etienne Dupuis, who's I mean singing uh, he, he's singing Albert uh, <laughs> this month at the Met and <laughs> just sang uh, Count uh, in Notre de Figaro, um, and it was such a great, a great experience. Uh, it, there's something quite uh, it's so relatable, mm -hmm. especially for North Americans. When society, mm -hmm. you know, those, those towns that they grew, mm -hmm. weaved mm -hmm. with religion. Mm -hmm. And this is not an anti-religion opera in any way. But it, 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 it just puts a big follow spot on, you know, what it means for, for people to conjugate those two things together. Uh, so, I mean, I, I would see this opera, uh, you know, in mm -hmm. any cities that grew up mm -hmm. weave with religion, which is mm -hmm. most North American cities. <laughs> but I mean, also, I mean, what had always intrigued me is that it's an all-male cast. Yes. So that the mother and... Uh, and Lydia and, and the all, Rosier is... A, are all played yes. by men, uh, and, but it's it's not men mimicking women. It, it's no. really... It, it, it's, it's The writing is wonderful for that. And another... In, point is that the original playwright who then wrote the screenplay and wrote the libretto is the same. It's, it's mm -hmm. Michel Marc Bouchard, yes, yes, which yes, is yes. truly something you don't find. Oh, yeah. at, least, at least definitely from going from play to screenwriter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then, I mean, becoming the librettist is a whole other piece of cake. Oh, yeah. And it's funny because Michel Marc and I, we, we, we are good friends and, and we're talking about the fact that, you know, for a writer to to understand that he needs to cut his own work because, you know, opera, it takes so much time to develop. So you need to, you know, synthesize, you, you know, and grade the essence. Mm -hmm. And for, me, for him, it was really difficult to, you know, cut his own work. And, uh, but, uh, but he managed it so beautifully. And I mean, the, the result, people mm -hmm. coming, me, coming to me after the, the show, sobbing, mm -hmm. telling me, you know, that there's a man who write to me, he said, I've been at the Opera of Montreal for 25 years, and and I it's been three days. I'm still shaken up. I'm gonna, you know, come see you in Victoria a year later. It was bigger than than itself. And and, and you follow that with another landmark project, which is another brick in the wall. Yes. Which which is uh, taking the libretto from the Pink Floyd. Uh, yeah work and, and you know con yeah, iconic concept, album con concept album yeah and but with completely new music by yes. Julian Bilido yes uh, what was that like uh, it, it, I mean it was a great experience the last time I did it was uh, last uh, November uh, in Toronto and I mean it's it's a great work I mean Julien really, really took the essence of that music and made new music it, it, it is not a, a a pop classic interpretation, like a, a you know, yeah, it, it's not like Metallica with uh, some right. kind of orchestra. Um, it re it is an opera. It is a, a new work by itself, and I mean, it just it lives, it 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 age really really well. It, it is so uh, to the point, and it, it's funny because when we created it in Montreal. Who was the lead? It was Etienne. Hey, Etienne. And in that opera, I'm his father. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and talking about flashback, it's there's like this flashback because the as uh, Roger Waters' uh, own father died uh, during the war, 
so we recreated that. So I, I'm I'm still young, looking kind of like through the time to mm -hmm. my, my my son. Uh, so that was really funny because you know we <laughs> it's in and I the first time we were us together. Last time we saw each other, we were kissing in the bathtub. <laughs> and I was his father. So that was that was quite something. But I mean, it was a, a great uh, a great experience. Uh, Dominique Champagne, who uh, was the director, uh, really famous director, who did uh, Love uh, yes. with Cirque du Soleil in, in Vegas. It was a great experience. And you know what? I'm extremely blessed because as Michel Marc is such a great uh, librettist and Julien, I think, is a brilliant composer, mm. next year in uh, Opera of Montreal, we're doing a new piece called La Beauté du Monde, and it's an original story by Michel Marc uh -huh. with the music of Julien. So, you know, we merged those two <laughs> brains of Quebec. What does that title translate? And so, it's The Beauty of the World. It's, okay. uh, it's an opera that will be um, uh, kind of like this uh, rem uh, rom uh, romanticized uh, historical uh, play mm -hmm. of the the head of the Louvre Museum okay. in, in Paris during uh, occupation. Oh. So we're talking World War II. Y yes. Uh, and uh, he is trying to preserve the art from the Nazi invasion. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's many, as Michel Marc really likes to do, there's uh, many subplots. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to play uh, Alexandre Rosenberg, who's a true uh, historical character. Uh, who's a French uh, Jew revol revolutionary, yes. and and he's trying to to he's the son of Paul Rosenberg, who's a big uh, art merchant, mm -hmm. um, and he's trying also to uh, to save the arts, you know, the beauty of the world, which is you know all the, mm -hmm. those, pie the, those pieces of the, the Louvre. So that's next year. Yeah, th this is going to be in March uh, 2020. Wow. What's really next for you after this, this uh, Leonor? What is coming up after? So my, I, I, I have like almost three weeks of, uh, of time with, uh, in my house in Montreal and then I'm flying to uh, Victoria, British Columbia to do my first Don Jose uh, in Carmen. Ah. And uh, this is uh, a great project. I'm really, really happy because it is difficult for a lyric tenor because I'm not, you know, I'm singing Florestan in this 1805. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm no Heldon, no Spinto tenor. Uh -huh. uh, and the reason I accepted to do that version is because of the classical and the lyric yes. way we, were, right. we want to approach the thing. It is the same thing with, uh, with Don José. I think that José, when it was created at Opera Comique, we're talking about lyric voices yes. uh, in a small, you know, thousand seat uh, opera house. Mm -hmm. um, Céline Gallimarié was a soprano. We're talking about like lighter voices. And I have this opportunity to go to Victoria, which is a great house. Uh, it's, it's really nice for the voice with a young and extremely talented Carmen. Her name is Caroline Spruce. She just had a night in Cozy at the Met uh, last week, actually, ah. as Dorabella. Uh, she's going to sing Carmen at the HDO mm -hmm. next, next year, I think. And it's her first Carmen, it's my first Don Jose, we're about the same age, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. The stage director is Serge de Moncourt, who was the stage director for, for Les Feluettes. Okay. Uh, he's one of the best stage director, if not the best, mm -hmm. actor, director that I ever worked with. So I'm extremely pleased to you know, break the ice in such a great environment. So yeah, it's going to be a, a, a great project. Well, that sounds exciting, and I, I wish you luck with your first Don Jose. Thank you. And it's been great talking with you. Likewise. And this has been Chuck Sachs for Indie Opera Podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you.